I could feel its presence like a giant beast lurking in the shadows. Only time will tell if this beast will be friend or foe. Stretching nearly 20,000 feet into the sky, Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in Africa and the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. This past January, New York Mets pitcher R.A. Dickey stood at its base and vowed to conquer the beast. For me, it was tough, you know, I, um, and we took a seven-day route, uh, which would help us acclimatize to the conditions as we ascended. Um, but it was still a long walk, I and mean, we were walking seven and a half, eight hours a day. Now, R.A. Dickey wasn't climbing Kilimanjaro because he wanted adventure. He climbed because he wanted to make a difference. In the off-season, he joined Bombay Team Challenge, a nonprofit dedicated to ending human trafficking. I felt like God was really calling me to uh, step out and uh, try to bring awareness to something that sometimes is like a white elephant in the room. Ari Dickey blogged about the climb on the New York Times website. But there was one detail he left out of his articles, the one secret he kept hidden from everyone for more than 20 years. Well, I was um, an eight-year-old boy, and I... Uh, was victimized by a babysitter um, a few times over the course of the summer and then again later in the summer as the summer turned to fall um, by a 17 year old boy. You feel like you've taken part in something so wicked that, that in, in, at some level it has to be partly your fault and I certainly felt like I was less than human um, and I didn't want to tell anybody about it because I felt like they would just throw their arms up and want to run the other way. And that was a risk I just was unwilling to take. As a kid, R.A. Dickey starred in the football, basketball, and baseball teams. He even won a poetry competition while in school. But in his book, Wherever I Wind Up, R.A. writes that these weren't just activities. They were an escape. I was always looking for things I could control, and I felt like my life had a lot in it that I could not control. And so I developed mechanisms for dealing with pain and trying to escape it and uh, you know it did a lot of damage over the course of my life. Sports offered me a sanctuary in that regard. It was something that if I put in the time um, I could be really good at and uh, I always found refuge there. His parents had divorced when he was just five years old. His mother was an alcoholic so when he was a teenager he moved in with his father. But that didn't make things better. Some nights he stayed over at a friend's house. Others, he broke into vacant homes in his neighborhood and slept there. I would park around the corner and I would, I would hide out and, you know, I just, I had it down. But at least that was a loneliness of my choosing, you know, at least I, again, I had control. There was a certain amount of peace I felt in that. As he got older, R.A. continued to excel in sports. He went to the University of Tennessee and became an academic All-American. In 1996, he won a bronze medal during the Olympic Games and was drafted by the Texas Rangers. The Rangers offered him an $800,000 contract until they noticed his arm was hanging a little funny. Doug Melvin was the general manager of the Texas Rangers at the time, and he looked across the table and said, you know, we want you to go get a second opinion, but right now we don't even know if we want to draft you. After running tests, doctors noticed that he was missing the owner collateral ligament in his pitching arm. He said he shouldn't be able to turn a doorknob without pain, let alone throw a baseball. I thought, this could mean that I'll never get a chance to play professional baseball. And it was hard, man. It was hard to lay that down. And when I sat down across the desk from Doug and he said, I'm sorry, we're taking that away. I stood up, I shook, him, I shook his hand, and I walked out. The Rangers slashed their offer by over 90%. Dickey signed anyway. And while he never experienced arm problems, his career was disappointing. He had to make a major change, so his pitching coach suggested he adopt the knuckleball. Now, the knuckleball is one of the hardest pitches to hit, but it's also one of the hardest pitches to throw. In fact, only a few major leaguers have ever done it effectively. On April 6, 2006, R.A. Dickey wasn't one of them. In his first and only start for the Rangers that year, R.A. gave up a major league record six home runs in one game. He was promptly sent to the minors. 
people pretend that they don't hear the crowd, but when you're walking off after an outing like that, you hear every boo, and it's a lonely place. You know, you feel like you, it's all for nothing. With his career in shambles and his life still haunted by the abuse, R.A. went to a counselor and decided to reveal everything. I mean, I was really dealing with things from suicidal thoughts to, um, you know, any kind of escape I could think of crossed my mind. Um, God used that man to really save my life. After trying to deal with his pain himself, R.A. asked God for help, and he says God answered. I felt him saying to me, um, you've been running and hiding long enough now. I've got something else for you. And so I took a step of faith. And once I took the step to say, you know, I was sexually abused and this is what happened, it was like an enormous, you know, I felt like Atlas, you know, and somebody had just taken the world off my shoulders. With a renewed focus on life, R.A. continued to play baseball and finally tamed the knuckleball. In 2010, at the age of 35, he joined the New York Mets and posted one of the best ERAs in the league. I had spent a lifetime trying to control things, people, you know, sports, and it wasn't working. It was crumbling down around me. And it, God brought me to the place where he said, enough, give it up, you know, surrender it. And the more I trusted God, um, the bigger he got. As R.A. Dickey ascended Kilimanjaro, he dealt with hallucinations and shortness of breath. But he wouldn't stop. As a fellow victim of sexual abuse, he knew he had to help. I thought about, you know, as dark and as cold as I might be, how dark and cold are they in those brothels in the red light districts of Mumbai. And, you know, that, that really put it in perspective and gave you a little more strength to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Down below and miles away, the New York Mets were getting ready for another season. Back at home, his wife was caring for the newest addition to the family, their fourth child. Across the world, Bombay Team Challenge raised more than $100,000 because of the climb. And on a chilly January morning, R.A. Dickey reached the top of the mountain and looked down. There's been a lot of things, believe me, that haven't gone to script for me that I would, you know, that I would have written out a certain way. And, but God has had something better. And only in reflection can you really see it, you know? You know, because he's given me a, not just a second chance, but a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance through to infinity, you know? And what, what a savior, you know? And that's, that's who he is to me. He's, he's a savior and, and it's just uh, such a sweet relationship.